All right, what's good, everybody? Hey, you know what? First of all, we got to start off with this right here. I want to know, can everybody hear me? Uh, we got, listen, the same people that be doing the podcast. We got, listen, Nader. Now, she didn't change to that. She answered all of the comments and we're going to be reading out the comments, right? So I'll be reading as I show you guys how to make this uh, brine. And then we got Missy. She's holding the camera, swaying back and forth. So if it make you dizzy, all you got to do is let us know, and I'll try to tell her to stop moving. Hey, with that being said, look, smash one in the comment. I mean, you know, in the chat so that I know that everything is working just fine. And then you let me know that if they can hear me, then we finna, you know, get on. So you guys ask all your questions, too. You know what I mean? We'll be able to see them in the chat. You know what I mean? And uh, as they get read out, you know, I'll answer them. You know what I mean? And then you guys can look. Tell me if you see your... Oh, they're the one. They're coming. All right. So look, that means the audio good. I hope you guys can see me. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, look, I started making my transition from here to Vegas. So... We got very limited things that we have have around here. Why are you looking like that? Why? Oh, you're good. Huh, you, you start looking at me like. Making sure my friend was right. Huh? Making sure my friend was right. Okay, yeah, it's all good. All right, so this is what we doing. We making a brine, right? Holidays coming. You guys want to know like how come some places you go or some people have like chicken or they even a turkey because this is really a poultry brine. So the, the, these flavors right here, this combination of this right here, just makes it. I don't know. I don't want to keep saying fire and all that kind of stuff. But listen, if you follow me, you know I got some brine recipes. Look, this is just like a recap. This is how you make everything juicy, right? Down to your turkey. Now, we got two couple of things right here. I'm going to be starting off in my uh, my Dutch oven, right? The reason I'm not using my burner or working in the back behind me, you know, so you guys can see. So I'm going to be using my induction top, right? You know you got to have metal. I'm going to put everything inside of here to get it going. Then I'm going to transfer it. If you look over here on this side, I'm going to transfer everything over here. And, you know, once I get it nice and cool, and this is where we set it up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just explain this part right here. Look, there's two types of brines, folks. Look, when you come to your brines, you know, everybody know about the, you guys might know about, like, doing it the buttermilk way. You know what I mean? Or you can do it this way. For me, especially for the holidays, I like to infuse with these combination of, you know, rosemary. We got thyme, parsley. You know, I'm going to go ahead and crush my garlic. You know, and then here's the key. You got to use kosher salt. If you use kosher salt, you're fine with the measurements I gave. Now, say you guys want to use that uh, iodine, iodine type salt. Listen, you want to reduce this by half. That is like super, super salty, right? Then we got peppercorns right here. I'm not going to tell you guys the level up for me. These are smoked peppercorns, right? And I got a couple of lemon and some slices. And then we got bay leaf right here. And I got this here because I'm going to show you guys. You guys have been watching me. You know, whenever I'm reaching in the crock pot or something like that, I always have to go in here and try to find my bay leaf, my thyme, my rosemary, all that. So, look, I'm going to just start doing it like I say I always wanted to. I'm going to put everything together and just bind them up. It makes it easier for to pull it out. All right. So, before I get started, you got anything for me? William Reed says, A.B., what's up? And then... Who? William Reed? William Reed. Oh, William Reed. Yes. What's good, fam? Yeah, and then we have Valerie Owen. She said, I tried the peach cobbler. Where you, you know, uh, I get a lot of comments about that because a lot of people, when they do their peach cobblers, they do their peach cobblers, right? And they like to, like, the way I had made it, I didn't brown the bottom crust. Uh, and then, you know, some people say it come out, I guess, like doughy. For me, I like it either way. It doesn't really make me a difference. I guess I kind of, like, change more so for, like, the Internet. You know what I mean? You're talking about changing who you are. But it don't be doughy. I try to tell people, especially when you're using a, a Pyrex, you know, when you put it in there, listen, that Pyrex get hot and cooks you from the bottom, too. Hey, but you know what? Uh, thank you. That's fire. And I got another one coming out maybe in a week or so. We're going to raise it up a little bit and do it with a little bourbon. So Tina Andrews said, where can we get smoked peppercorns? Oh, you know what? I know where to get them from. You know what? Uh, if you give me a little while after this video is over with, what I'll do is I'll uh, put a link in there so you guys can get them. That'd be like my level up. So a lot of times when you see me out there hitting it with my grinder, Y'all didn't bring nothing back on. <laughs> Everything is in Las Vegas. You know, when I'm hitting with my grinder, that's what's in there. I don't even use regular peppercorns no more. So I talked about going ahead and just binding this up, right? So I take my parsley, rosemary, and thyme, right? Put it all right here. And this is what I'm going to do. Right. Real simple, folks. You know, and I want to say this part. I'm going to uh, start getting back to cooking live, you know. I like I like this right here. Look, it's easy for me, you know what I mean, uh, with all the different takes. Then, you know, it's got to be edited and all of that. This right here, I think I'm going to bring this into the 
I'm finna bring this back into the forefront. So Pat needed to the party. What it do, Pat? You supposed to be here right now, fam? Got me out here solo bolo. <laughs> All right. So this is how we finna start this off. First thing we want to do is we want to get ready. And you know, so look, I got this Dutch oven right here, right? Talk to me, y'all. I hope you guys like the color. I never thought I'd be in the colors like that. I got Dutch ovens in just about, about every color. You know what I mean? I like the greens, the blues, the reds, the orange. You know what I mean? Now I'm finna start lightening it up a little bit. So we want to start off with just eight cups of water, right? So let me go ahead and get that. You can. You, that you can do. Normally when I cook, you know what I like this right here? So you guys can just see how I do it. Like when I make my videos, you'll notice that I have a lot of stuff already pre-measured out. But this is where it works, right? To just start off with eight cups, it's okay to just go ahead and have that. I should have had the first four cups already, you know, lined out and ready to go. But I'm hitting it with some hot water to just go ahead and get it to expedite, you know, on the boiler. Oh, no, no, that's a good question. Oh, Amazon Basics. You know, uh, you guys can go with Lodge. You can go with that. What's that? That French name? That Lee, whatever that is, you can go with that. You know, uh, it's up to you. You ask me, they all the same. It's all cast iron with a ceramic coating and the color that you prefer. So I ain't gonna lie to you. You know what I mean? Uh, I like to like get a bargain. Amazon Basics, you probably pay for these. Mm, I'm gonna say these probably, how much was this? These are probably like 50, yeah. 50 bucks. Yeah. You can't beat it. So Casey's Spain says, hi everyone, AB. I would like to make a duck for Thanksgiving. Is there any way you can advise me on some Making the duck, huh? First of all, I say, check this brine out right here. Look, you want it to be, huh? Yeah, you, you start right there. Look, I brine all of my poultry, even my big bird, the, the turkey. Hey, he going to be brine. I usually put that in a, a big bucket. And this is probably going to trip you guys out. When I do it, after I get everything nice and cold and I got, to, I got the bird inside, I take the bird and I put it like somewhere like in my garage over in the corner. So it's key that you got to leave it. You want to make sure it's completely submerged. You put that over there. And then when you want to brine, you want to brine for like eight, eight, 12, eight hours minimum. I would say that all the way up to like 16 hours. I mean, I have by accident before because something else just come up. I went 24 hours like that. But you want to make sure you store it somewhere where it stay nice and cool. You know what I mean? Uh, but for the duck, I haven't I've only made duck and I really made a duck with somebody like in my family. That was really their thing. Uh, the taste was a little different for me. You know what I mean? Uh, but we brine that duck too. And from what I remember, everything that just went pretty much normal as if we were doing it like a chicken. You know, we cooked it like just the same way. Can you do this brine in a crock pot? I'm going to say no. Why? Because we need to get this up to a boil. You know what I mean? So you got a gas stove, electric stove. You want to heat this up. And then it's really like a dump and go. I'm going to go over the ingredients, you know, and show you guys. You know what I mean? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just put this on high and I'm going to start it. And, you know, forget when you're using an induction top, the key with the induction top is it's got to be metal. You know what I mean? This is why I'm not using my spun aluminum, you know, pot right here. Because this right here, it being aluminum, it won't pick up the metal, the uh, magnet inside of a Dutch, uh, inside of the induction top. That's the whole thing. So this is why you guys are going to see me do something a little different. If I had my gas burner here, I would have cooked it all right here, then hit it with some ice, cooled it down, and then dropped the bird in there. Then we just started brining. All right, so put this top on here like that. Absolutely. And listen, I'm getting ready to do one. So the question would be like, how can we dunk, dunk a turkey in the water, right? And then we're going to go ahead and hit it with the fry because we all know once you hit it with the water, it's going to just go crazy. The key is, for me, what I do is, whilst I brine, I make sure I let it sit up for a minute and any, any of the liquid, any of the brine liquid that comes out, that dispels from that, you know, I wipe that up, clean it up, and then I come with a, a paper towel and I make sure that the outside is like super, super dry, you know? And then that's when you go outside and you be healthy. I mean, you be safe, you know what I mean, when it comes to uh, deep frying. 
And uh, if you guys watched the video that I did last year with Matt, Mr. Make It Happen, uh, he exposed me to the indoor fryer. That right there was baller. I think he had a butterball indoor fryer. You guys look that up. Hey, real cool. You don't want to go outside and do that, and it's super safe. Opens up, drop your bird in there. Hey, you can't beat it. But for me on the West Coast, I'm old school with it. Hey, Pat, if you're still in here, I know what you're talking. I know what you're thinking right now. Pat do them turkeys in that that in that oven. Pat got them in here right now, super moist. You know what I mean? But I'm gonna do a West Coast style, man. From Nate Dixon, said, can you use a cast iron Yes. And so you guys know, a cast iron Dutch oven is the exact same. This is just ceramic coated. You know what I mean? Because it got the, like the pretty little gradient, you know, fade on it, that kind of stuff. Can you use limes instead of lemons? Yes, you can. Lime, lemon. Well, that's about, oh, I was going to say, that's about it, but no. Hey, and orange. You know what I mean? To be honest with you, when I do it, it's whatever they got at the store that I see first. You know what I mean? Lime will give you a little bit more of a, you know, refreshing type taste to it. You know what I mean? I prefer to have the lemon or the orange. Orange being number one. But I sent somebody to the store and they came back with these. You know what I mean? So we, we ain't going to say nothing. Can you bake it instead of frying after the brine? Hey, good question. And I'm glad you guys are asking me all these questions because I'm not the greatest at just explaining it all like that, right? Listen, once you brine, you can cook it any kind of way you want to. So obviously, if you can go ahead and uh, hit this on the in the deep fryer, you know what I mean? Whether you're doing a chicken or a turkey, you can do you can do bake it. You can do however you want to. Hey, to be honest with you, you want a real, real cold flavor? I'm going to tell you what you do. Go ahead and get your cast iron pan. Get you a 12 inch. After you brine, get you some, you know what I'm saying? We're going to put some color in there because what we're going to do, we're going to roast it in the cast iron. I'll make them like that too. Pat says, yes, my brother, I'm roasting or smoking right Right, right, right. If I had the time, I would, uh, if I had the time, I, I would, I would do it. But I ain't going to have no time to it after Christmas. I mean, after uh, Thanksgiving to start smoking. Can you replace half the water for the brine with chicken box? You know what I got? Let me, you know what? Let me think about that. Who asked that question? Is, Somebody always wanted to throw a... Yeah. Latoya, you always want you want to throw some kind of monkey wrench in the game right now. <laughs> Let me just think right now. I'll say the water because we come in with the kosher salt. You know what I mean? I know that has the sodium. I know that gives a different type of flavor. Now I got I'm just want to be 100 with you. I've thought of that before, but I never wanted to just find out and make sure that I didn't want to find out that like, hey, it didn't do what they wanted it was supposed to, and it took away from my brine. You know what I mean? But I asked myself that one day I'm gonna go ahead and do it so I can get you a solid answer. But I don't think we're looking for that type of flavor uh, profile. So for me, I just ask you guys to follow this just the way it is. And then you guys got to come back. You Please, you got to come back and tell me the difference. Because we didn't all roast it, fry, bake, and did whatever you did for your poultry, however you've been doing it all these years. If you never brine, most people never go back. You know what I mean? It's just a, it's just a hands down. And I don't know the science behind it, but it's about cooking this, being extra after you get all these, these these flavors to marinate together, right? After it boils, and then when you know, along with the kosher salt, there's something about the kosher salt how it goes inside of the meat, and then it 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 does what it does. You know what I mean? You would think it would be like super salty, but then it just after so long, it like dispels that. I really don't know the science on that, but I can tell you. I always tell people trust the process. This is like foolproof right here. And most people are gonna ask you like, hey, how'd you get that so uh so juicy? Now. I'm going to go ahead and do these while we just waiting for this to come up. Cassandra Hampton, after you brine, do you rinse the turkey off? Yes, I do. I hadn't got to that. Yes, yes. That's what we're going to do. After we do that, you guys are not going to be able to see that because I'm not going to be live that long. I just want to show you guys it's really easy. And I'm just getting a little access to myself so you guys can just ask questions, right? You, maybe now you don't have to, like, leave the comments, which still leave the comments. You got something? You like this? You know what I mean? Let me know down in the comment section below. And then, you know what? Do me one favor. If you like this and you want to see more of these lives, smash that like button. I really want to do more of these lives. You know what I mean? Maybe I should be doing a live like every other week. You know what I mean? Something like that. But absolutely. After I brine it and it's done like that, that's what I do. I take it, go right to the sink, rinse it all off, hold it up, let it drip dry. Then I put it down and I let it rest. You know what I mean? Because it's going to dispel some more liquid. I get all of that off of there. And then I go ahead and pat it dry one more last time. And then I do whatever I'm going to do with it. So now, 
sorry, Daniel Williams, AB, how much ice do you use to cool the frying pan? Listen, you want your, your okay, so the purpose of you cooling it down like that is you don't want to put no raw, any type of, any, any raw meat into the warm water because what you're doing, it's like making a pasta. You don't want to, you know, like, you don't want it to continue to cook. So that's why we cool it, right? We call that the shot. That's what we do. We want it to be, you know, super cold. So when we put that in there, it's not cooking the meat on its own because then you'll lose that process. So if you ask me how cold it is, I just got mine cold. And because I only got so much, I had some ice right here. This right here is just gonna go in. But in order for us to get these flavors, we gotta get this up to a boil. We getting there, I see the bubbles on the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see them. See right now, you can start seeing the steam. <laughs> hey, this remind me of what I always say. If you looking, you ain't cooking. I just let a lot of my heat out. All right, so what I do is I just take a, uh, I take my knife, you know, my chef knife, I get right on right here on top of my uh on top of my garlic cloves. Check it out. We just want to go ahead and crack it. Obviously, you know, if you put it in there like that, I guess it would work. It would soften up and all of that. But look, we're finna release some flavor right here. That's what I do. I smash them. You can see the juice. I don't know. Can y'all look? You can see it on my board. Look in there. You see that juice right there? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Can you massage softened butter and cheese cloth on a grinded turkey breast? Breast only. Talk to me and help me understand the question. You say with the cheese cross, I got that. What about pineapple, apple, or orange juice in the brand? You know, I'll, I'll say this. If it's pure, 100% pure, maybe, you know, I could see that working, you know what I mean? But nothing if it got them sugars and all that kind of stuff in there. You don't want to take like Daffy Duck orange juice, you know, and just add it to it. <laughs> I, hey, I made myself laugh. But I was just trying to think, like, I just saw that. Oh, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you don't want to take, hey. That's that kid stuff. You know what I mean? This right here, you can't go wrong. Flipping sports guys says only cooking shows something new right here. Huh? The, cookie, the flipping sports guy says only cooking shows someone needs is right here. Hey, that's what's up, man. Hey, I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, uh, hey, you know what? This is just I'm just a, a down to earth type of cat. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I look at and I read all of these comments. Everybody call me ump. You know what I mean? I hit everybody back like, hey, what's good, nephew? You know what I mean? Uh, even when it come down to uh, Matt for Mr. Make It Happen, I run into people. They be like, hey, man, they ask me like, hey, how is he your nephew? I would just I try to explain to him. I was like, hey, that's street, that's street slang, right? You know what I mean? Hey, you my nephew. You younger than me, you my nephew. Coach Simmons says, my man is back. Oh, yeah, I'm back. I'm, I'm really back. Hey, with that being said, listen, you guys, please go ahead, smash that like button. You know what I mean? I didn't tell everybody, you know, it's a cool channel. I'm going to work on my times. I just decided to do this today. You know, we just spared a moment. Nobody really knew. We just said, uh, let's just go live and just see what happens. But I'm going to probably put together. I'm, I'm looking for a good time that I can put something together so you guys will know. I really want to capture it after work. everybody's off work. You know what I mean? So everybody can, you know, enjoy at least, you know, 20 or 30 minutes, you know, to have access. And if you ask me, look, it's this type of uh, content right here that's killing TV. You know what I mean? How else can you like get on there and just talk to Denzel Washington, Tom Cruise, or anybody like that? Or even your favorite chef. You know what I mean? Some of these guys, they just big, they on TV on the Food Network. You know what I mean? Uh, hey, it's just a lot to get some access. I feel like uh, YouTube is just killing the game, or any of these social media platforms is killing the game because you can talk, go live, get interaction right away. Michael Judah says, How long should I brine a 20 pound turkey? Ooh, a 20 pound turkey, huh? I'm going to just say this, the size, I don't know if the size really matter that way, a minimum of eight hours. I'm going to do this chicken right here, a minimum, I'll probably do this for about eight hours. Uh, but if I'm doing the turkey, I like to at least let it go overnight. So I'm going to say anywhere at 12, 14 hours, hey, you in the game. But remember, man, after you rinse it, the key is you got to get it completely padded dry. You know what I mean? If you're going to fry, you know, if you're doing anything else, you still want to get it padded dry. And then, you know, it's up to you what you're going to do. If you're going to put it in the oven, you know, we can uh, make some kind of compound butter, put some of that on there, 
you know, and go from here. Hey, did that other person come back with the, uh, to explain that question? Oh, okay. Neely. So mom oh, says, oh, Mama Neely. She says, hi, B. So blessed that you are a friend of my son, Pat. <laughs> we'll be happy to be your bonus mom. Let oh, me. you know what? Uh, hey, stop <laughs> it. Hey, every hey, when I go, man, how, hey, these emotions I'm having right now. I don't know what's happening. You know what I'm saying? But uh, hey, thank you, Mama Neely. You know what I mean? Uh, hey, I'm going to take you up on that. You know what I mean? Hey, Mama Neely, I'm coming down your way. And look, your new favorite, I'm going to just say your new son. I was going to say favorite, but you got a favorite already. But look, your newest addition to the family, us two, Mama Neely in the middle, and we finna get it. All right. So you saw, the, okay, so back to this part. Look, you saw I went ahead and just put this all in here like that. Let me see where we at. Uh, we working on a on a boil. I actually told you guys I put it on high. I put it on medium high. I'm going to just say this because I got my lights plugged into this induction top. I'm scared to push high because I know what will happen. It'll go dark on y'all. You know what I mean? So, and I don't want to have to walk to the back, flip no break breaker. So I'm just letting it come up to it. It's almost starting to boil right now. Though. So look, I'm going to go ahead and add my bundle. These are my fresh, my fresh herbs. If you don't have peppercorn, can you not use it? Yes. I've never, ever not had it because I keep it. You know what I mean? Because I use grinders. You guys know I love to crack pepper. I like that more than I like digging in there with a, uh, a measuring spoon. You know what I mean? I don't like them little cans with the pepper. I just like that fresh crack. So I always have it. Uh, this just gives it. These are all profiles that marry together well that make your poultry have a certain taste to it. You know what I mean? So I, I'm imagining if you take this out and you did everything else, it'll go. But I would just suggest, especially with Amazon right now, anybody can get anything sent to their doorstep. So if you're going to make this brine, especially for this holiday, you got a little time, just call two days later, it's at your door. And if you live in a big city like I do, yeah, you know how it is. You can get down like at a certain time. It might come the same day. If not, it'd be on the doorstep in the morning. You know what I mean? But I would just suggest keeping that. And if you follow on this channel right here, you got to have peppercorns. STF, do you spatchcock your poultry? I do. Only, okay, so when it comes to spatchcocking, I do it if, if, I'm, if I'm in a rush with the oven or something like that, but I especially do it when I'm out on the grill. You know what I mean? If you guys want to know what spatchcock means, uh, let me just find out. How many people know about uh, spatchcocking? I said, hey, why everybody smile when I say that? It's, it's funny, huh? Spatch cocking. That's what, hey, that's what it is, though. You know what I mean? That's what it's called. You know what I mean? Uh, if you know what it is, drop a one. If you don't know, drop a five. And I'll go ahead and just explain it. Huh? I know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to know. Okay, so look, check it out now. Did you put all of the ingredients in the... Oh, they already down. Okay, in the description box. Okay. So, here we go. After you brine, do you also inject? Also, do you use compound butter and the skin? Hey, excellent question. So let, we're going to talk about that. Look, let me just say this right here. I got bay leaves, right? Put them in right now, too. All right, yeah. I'll put that in last. Oh, you know what? Let's go with the peppercorns. We put those in there. So now you guys are starting to see how it look. You know? Put that over here. Now we talk. Put that over here. Now, you want to know, do I inject? Sometimes I do. It depends on what I'm doing. Uh, I almost always brine. Unless it's last minute, I don't brine, right? You know what I mean? So if I'm looking for a certain uh, flavor profile, excuse me. Playing specific songs is only available with Amazon Music Unlimited. Hey, she always listens to something. Alexa, off. Hey, this is live. He ain't no telling. <laughs> hey, I'm glad she didn't say nothing crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, that was cool. She talking about takeoff. I got it. All right. So uh, where was we at? Injection. I'll break it down like this. Do you also inject and do you use compound butter? Right. Okay. So injection, you're injecting for a certain type of flavor, right? As I was saying, I almost always brine. If I'm looking to level up or trying to compete or show somebody something that they ain't never seen before like there's levels to it i can tell you you can level up like you guys cook your family way then i gotta level up i cook my way i just always call that to level up and then if you're gonna do something like just way up over the top you know what i mean you can brine and inject but if you ask me 
brining gives you your flavor. And if you season it just right, it's almost perfect. Unless you're looking for a certain type of, uh, you know, profile. So either way, I think that's more personal than anything. But as far as me, every now and then I'll do both. But I, my preferred method is just to brine. So if you come to my house and you're looking at that turkey, and when you're looking at it, you just see him bust open and start leaking, that's because I brined him. <laughs> Um, Brian Wilson says, it's like listening to one of my uncles give a cooking <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, it's crazy to hear somebody say that. You know what I mean? Because who would have ever thought, you know, I would have been doing this. You know what I mean? Uh, welder, pipe fitter by trade. You know what I mean? And for me to be, uh, you know, talking to everybody, you know what I mean, about cooking. You know what I mean? And then you got to remember, look, my grandma only taught me so much. I mean, which... Let me do that for my grandma. Pop me in the back of my head. You know what I mean? But I learned a lot of stuff, like just uh, checking out uh, YouTube University. So what I'm doing now is I'm just taking my lemon, just cutting me a few slices. I just want to get five. I hate to be wasteful here. You know what I mean? X from the A said, A, B, do an apple crisp one time for the culture. One time for the what? For the culture. Hey, apple crisp, no problem. No problem. Hey, let me ask you this. How many people have checked out the, uh, I got to talk about this. How many of y'all checked out the uh, the apple pie? That's what I want to know. Tell me about that. Hey, you thought I was having an old man moment? You was like, apple pie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, no, we good. We good. Know thyself said, which is better in your opinion, Brian or injection? I don't know. I don't. You know what? It'd be a biased answer if I see it. Uh, it's really up to you. Again, when we inject, huh? Yeah, okay, my opinion. <laughs> man, Brian. Brian hey, I'm a briner. You know what I mean? And then there's other things I put in here too. I'm just showing you guys how to get in the game. You know what I mean? You know, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm gonna put these five slices in. Let's open this up right now. Oh yeah. Look at that right there. How long do you usually let it brine for? Also, my husband has peach cobbler from the recipe and Oh, you know what? Thank you. And then stay on the lookout because I got something for you. I'm getting ready to do that uh, that bourbon. Now, let me just say this part right here. Come on in here and take a look at this. I'm going to open this up. You see it boiling? Right? I'm going to go ahead and cut it off right now. Know thyself gave us a super challenge. Hey, that's what's up. Hey, thank you. Look, this right here, once it starts boiling, I usually stop, right? I'm going to go ahead. Let me, let me leave this off now. Now we're going to go ahead and move. This is what I want to do. I want to go ahead and add my honey. Daniel Williams said, Uncle A.B., can I use soy sauce in a brine instead of salt? Hmm. Man, you guys. Man, I need a real show. You know why? Because I would rather somebody ask me these questions, you know what I'm saying, and then we do them and just experiment. Hey, that's a good question, too. I like that, man. Uh, I'm going to say I don't know the answer to that. Uh, but I understand what you're saying. And anytime I use soy sauce anyway, I'm going to say no. Because anytime I, like the soy sauce I buy is always at 33%, you know, less, less sodium. You know what I mean? Uh, we all watching our, you know, our, uh, I was about to say cholesterol, but we watching that too. But we all watching our sodium intake. You know what I mean? We trying to stay away from that hypertension. Look like we can't stay away from it. We got to live with it. So you know what? We got to manage it. And, you know, we try to keep our food, you know, flavorful, stuff like that. But you see that right there? That's it. Now, last thing I'm going to add to this. My culture salt. They didn't know mom was on LOL. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, don't get jealous, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, Big Pat, don't get jealous, man. You know, hey, mama nearly got me too. You know what I'm saying? Hey, mama, you need something? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Got that. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the, you know, put this on here like that. I, once it comes to a boil, listen, it's hot enough to extract all of the flavors and for them to marry, right? That's from the A said A D A K A LeBron James. What up, man? <laughs> hey, I used to work with that cat right there. Hey, what's good, fam? <laughs> hey, I'm yeah, I'm coming back y'all way. You know what? I'll be in Virginia, you know what I mean? Uh, but I just don't be down that far. You know what I mean? Uh getting close to y'all. But I'm finna make a trip there, I think in December, and I'm gonna come see y'all, man. I'll let you know, bro. I'll hit you up. You know what I mean? We need to hook up. I love 
love your Cajun recipes. Can I Cajun my turkey? Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. You know what? Wait, 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 wait. You, hey, they done took everything from me. <laughs> All this stuff is uh, really in uh, yeah, no, Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Exactly right. Yeah, you know what I'm looking for. Hey, somebody tell me in the comment section. They want to know, can I Cajun the turkey? Talk to me, folks, or talk to them and let them know what could they use to just get it over the top. I mean, you shouldn't even have brought it in yet. <laughs> Uh-oh. Why did I do that? Oh, you know, I'm going to start sneezing. You know what I mean? Why did I do? <laughs> <sighs> hey, well, here you go. This right here. Listen, when I want to take something over the top, I understand it say Creole. Creole, Cajun. I know that's that big... I ain't gonna say it's a debate because they two different things, but this right here, when you taste this, all of a sudden you can hear that banjo. You know what I mean? You can probably hear that harmonica. Look, we down in the bayous with it. <laughs> this, this right here, hey, of course you can. Maybe I said that came back from that one question. Huh? She said it's a technique that calls for any type of liquid soaked or cooking wine soaked cheesecloth placed over the bird while it's cooking. Mm. Okay, now I've seen that and didn't even know the, the particulars as far as uh, it's been pre-soaked in anything. Uh, that's outside of my, uh, I'm going to say that's outside of my, hey, this is what I say if I, no, 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 I, I'd say something like this if I was on the job. That's above my pay grade, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, that's my way of saying, look, I really don't know, but that's very, very interesting. So now I'm going to take a deep dive because I love to like learn new things and uh, if I can, you know, make that happen, I will. Also, do you butter under the skin and can you do that after the brine? Yes. Yes, you can. I would say you can do all of that after the brine, but I wouldn't suggest doing that if we can dip it into like a deep fry. So if you're baking, you know what I mean, or roasting, that's an excellent thing to do. And if you guys don't know what they're talking about right now, I'll do it like this for you. So come on in here and take a look at this. What they're talking about. This is what I was talking to you about earlier, Nader. The compound butter, you know, use a compound butter. And if you guys, okay, so to explain the compound butter is just, you know, softened butter with like uh, garlic. You 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 put whatever you want to put in there. I would say you would start with an unsalted butter, you know what I mean? And then go with a little garlic, you know, whatever you want to put in there to make it your own, right? And then when you lift this up like this, you run your finger like this, you separate the skin from the meat. You see how I'm sticking my finger in here, y'all? Look, this is how that works. If I do this, then we would go ahead... I love working with my hands, folks, so forgive me. Then I'd go in and get that softened butter, that softened compound butter, and I'd get it all up in here. So let me turn it around. Most people start from the top of the breast. I just did that so you guys can see. I would start from up this way, make this where the skin is just overlapping the breast, and I'd just, ooh, just put that all around. Now I want you to hear my tone and listen to that. I just had to lick my lips because I didn't want to drool on that because, listen, I'm thinking about it and just putting that down. I'm like, whew, that's fire. For the holiday, that's how you get down. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. That's how you should get down. Now, let me take this piece right here because I made something earlier today. What happened to what we made earlier? What happened to the rest of the chicken parts? No, the chicken parts that I put in the bag. Here, move that other way. So hold on one second, folks. Let me just find it. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. It's already frozen. I'm going to just take this along with the rest of the chicken because I did a rotisserie chicken earlier this morning. Right? Let me get the rest out. Brian, can I add additional seasoning? Uh, be a little bit more specific. You're talking about to the brine, or we saying after the brine process, can you do? If you're saying that, then yes, you can. Can you brine a turkey breast without the bone? Yes. Okay. Yes. Can hey. You also brine the chicken. Then again, we may just have turkey this year because of you. Oh, but look, hey, take a look at this right here. This this is what this is. This is a chicken. You know what I mean? Hey, you know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> hey, hey, I like that. This is a small turkey. And then I even got his cousin in the refrigerator, the corn is in. 
Alright. Wash my hands. Oh yeah, you can add whatever you want to do on the top. That's when you're supposed to. You put your flavor profile on there that you like. You know what I mean? So the brine gives it a little bit of a distinct, you know, taste to it in the inside. But the most most important thing is this is how your 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 turkey or any of your poultry stay like super, super moist and juicy. So earlier I had made a uh I made a comment and I said that's why, you know, if we're looking at the turkey, when you're looking at it, it'll just pop open and start leaking. I mean, it is that juicy. You swear it'd been in a bag, but it it, it won't. <clears throat> All right. Hey, you know what? Uh, much appreciated. And just to let you guys know, anything you guys put into the channel, what I do is I take it and I mix it and I put it right back into the channel to make productions and things like this. What you see, it just make it a little bit more accessible and easy for me to keep bringing you guys this uh this type of content. I do truly, you know, say uh, thank you. Uh, I'm born and raised. Listen to this. This probably trip everybody out. I'm born and raised in, uh, in uh, I guess, South Central Los Angeles. That's where I'm from. And then, look, I heard earlier, you, you read something from my cousin. Where my cousin at? Hey, Kieran, you in here? You know what I mean? I uh, spent a lot of time with my, my, my cousin, you know what I mean, over there in Hub City. I'll just say that. Anybody out here, you know what Hub City is, you know what I mean? But she out here now in uh, Vegas. Next, I'm next to her now. Uh, born and raised in South Central. Been out in the IE for like a, I don't know. I've probably been out here 20, 20 years, which is like the Riverside, Moreno Valley, that type of area. You know, those type of uh, cities. And then uh, just recently moved a few months ago to Las Vegas. So I'm almost in the process of getting out of here. So at the end of this month, it'll be the last time you guys see this backdrop. All right. LC <clears throat> says, throw down who you got, a Bobby Flay versus AB. AB picks the dish. Who you got? Oh, for sure. I, I got me. <laughs> hey, I got me all day. Hey, but I got to say this, though. Bobby Flay, it's, it's a couple people that I like that, that's, that's big like that. Uh, Bobby Flay would probably be my favorite. You know what I mean? Uh, I just heard his whole story. Well, you know, when he was talking about him in school, I know he didn't finish high school. You know what I mean? He went right straight to work in the kitchen worked his way up from the dishes, you know what I mean, to who he is today. Uh, just love this story. I found that to be real relatable to myself. You know what I mean? Not the school part and all that. Just I just liked his story. And when he told it, it was like so genuine. You know what I mean? Uh, so he kind of like been like, a, uh, hey, that was just somebody I just said, hey, I can do that. And then another person I like is uh, is uh, G. Garvin. You know what I mean? Uh, G. Garvin did it for me. You know what I mean? Seeing him on the Food Network, yeah, I was like, ah, that was cool. Then you got Pat Neely. You know, down home with the Neelys. Yeah, she got another son. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, you do. But uh, anybody know Bobby Flay, you can call him up and tell him, let's get down. Hey, but this show going to be called B-A-B. You know what I mean? I know it's beat Bobby Flay. All right. Donovan1019, what other recipes are coming for Thanksgiving? Uh, You guys got to help me with the stuff we got on there. Uh, Okay, I just did a sweet potato pie. I know you guys looking at the thumbnail. It's not the best thumbnail, but I only way I could do it was to cut it so you guys can see it was sweet potato pie, but I had put that uh, walnut and pecan topping on there. That right there is fire. I read the comments. A lot of people was like, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that, but I ain't going to make it with the, the topping. I don't like nuts at all. You know what I mean? Hey, but that combination between uh, sugar, walnut, pecan, and that mixture, look, it had that flour. It baked in and pulled some of that moisture in off of the top of that sweet potato pie. Mm. Really, you talking about a game changer? That's it. Nate Dixon said, so honey is the sugar for the brine. I never thought to do that. Hey, you have just been leveled up. Look at this right here. You can see how soft this is. I got to quit moving it for it tear up, you know, my little bundle. But all of this is starting to just work. Now, notice I got my bag of ice. Normally, I would tell you this. Say so you don't have to have ice. You ain't got to run out to the store and do that. If you do this, take the lid off of this. You know what I mean? At least crack it and let it cool for about three hours. You want it to be like cold or room temperature. You know what I mean? You should be able to do that. But for me and for this video, I mean, for this live right here, I'm going to go ahead and just shock it and get this real cold. So I don't even need to look down here because I'm going to ask you to. You think I'd have a, a meat thermometer down here? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> all right. So look, it's nothing here. <laughs> nothing here. No more. But no problem. We can all fill it with our hand. 
So we got this right here. I let this sit up for a minute because after it boils, like I say, after it boils, I usually let it boil for about five minutes. This was enough. I had it nice and hot. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit it with this ice. But before I do that, I just thought about this. I'm going to transfer everything over here first. So Cameron Watson said spatchcock. Did you end up telling me? What was that question again? Do I spatchcock? Yeah, I did. Yeah, they oh, what it is. Oh, what it is. Yeah. Hey, perfect. Before I even get in here. Yeah. Spatchcock. If you guys look it up. Listen, it's the process of opening the bird up like that. Now, at my restaurant, we spatchcock turkeys like that so we can cook them fast. You mean, it cuts your cooking time, and it, it cuts it down tremendously. Instead of cooking the turkey, we can smoke one on there for about, about an hour and a half to in between an hour and a half to two hours. You know what I mean? So, look, it's the process of just cutting this down, opening this up. I flip it over, and I, I hit it like that. I snap it so that the whole thing lays this way. And listen to this. Think about this. When it's opened up and it's flat like that, think of the seasoning you can put on there. A lot of people are like, hey, man, that's like just, hey, it was so good. They think the, the, the spatchcock, just by cutting it, did it. It's not that. It's just the fact that we can put seasoning up on the backside. All right. So Michael Judah gave you a super chat. And, um... Okay, you don't have to, you don't have to uh, say, say, say the money. You can just say it's just a super chat. <clears throat> Turkey is pre brine. Would it be too much to use an additional brine? Nah, I, you know what? I don't know. Like, why would you know? I guess if we didn't have the ingredients, we're trying to save some time. Like, if we didn't pre plan, I guess getting a pre brine uh, turkey is cool. I have never ever seen that available at all. You know what I mean? If you can get one, I mean, I would just say trust the process if they gave you one, but. It had to see how I would have to see how it was sealed. If I bought a pre brine one, I would want it to be vacuum sealed when they give it to me. Reason being, look, it's sitting up and it might leak out whatever it's going to leak out. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Uh, that's one that's, that's to be determined on that answer right there. I would just say trust the process. If it's sealed, then you're good. Let me go ahead and get me some pot holders. So I don't have no. Bobby Flay, we're calling you out. Hmm? It says, I got A B. Bobby Flay, we're calling you out. That's right. Hey, let him know. Tell him, hey, tell him I'm on his bumper. Tell him we can go live. Tell him this ain't the Food Network. We can get down on uh on this YouTube. We can stream it on all platforms. All right, so look, let me explain this one more time. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm using an induction top. This is aluminum. Aluminum does not work with an induction top. So you guys saw me in the beginning, I built my channel on using an induction top, right? But I had pots that were metal on the bottom of them. Uh, I could show you, but anyway, they got metal on the bottom. And it worked, it's a magnet here, that's the heating element. So therefore, I need a bigger pot because once I put the chicken in, along with this liquid, and I'm gonna add this to it, and it cool, I need a pot big enough so that I don't have no overflow. So, before, can you smoke the turkey after the brine? Absolutely. Absolutely. Have you ever brined a turkey? Dry brine. Yes, I have. I think I'm more of a fan, if you want to know, I'm more of a fan of doing it uh, this way, the wet brine. Thank you. I mean, you could read if they write something. To, okay, okay, okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You know, just cut the garlic in half instead of breaking it. Uh, smashing just, I think, I mean, I guess you could. The, the main thing is just getting it to open up. For me, it's just easier, not even worth the trouble of uh, cutting one in half. You figure you got one, it's just too easy just to go in here. Because I'm taking this, I'm doing this video, you know, and I'm doing a lot of talking. I could have ran through that by the time that you, by the time you take the garlic and you just go ahead and get them, you could take a couple of them just and get them to smash to open up so that that aromatic and that flavor profile are going the inside. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and cool this. Huh? It's the process of like, like to over rub, you know what I mean? To put that on there and then, you know, waiting. You know what I mean? But I don't know if, when I've done it and I've had other people do it, you know what I mean? I'm gonna say this, I think it works better if it's a, uh, a wet brine. To me, that's like just a more like a heavy rub 
you know what I mean, like an overseasoning job, uh, job, you know, and then we all know how the salt works, how it goes in, pulls the moisture out, stuff like that. But this right here, to me, hands down, 100%, so you guys can hear it again, wet brine, trust me, and I'll see you guys the day after. I'm going to see some of y'all, y'all coming back. If you ain't never done, you ain't never brine, I'm going to see some of y'all uh, the day of. Later on, you're going to be like, hey, B, hey, you the truth. Right, all right. Please do. Please trust the process. I don't know why I'm doing this right now. I just like to see the, the slices up on the top. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just to look at them. That right there, folks, is a textbook brine. Tell me how much time we got. We have about 45 minutes. We have 45 minutes? All right. So, look, I probably will just go to, to one hour. Uh, well, we'll go until this is done. Now, we got a container. Okay, let me address this part. Say we're doing a turkey, right? Once you do your turkey and you put your brine in there, I put my brine inside of a bucket, right? I don't, you know, I get myself a five-gallon bucket, you know, that'll cover just about most of the big, you know, the big giant turkeys. I put the brine in there and then I cool it. You know what I mean? Once it's cold like this, you know this is cold. Again, if she comes back in, take a look at this right here. You can still see it got ice on there. And then if you look on the side of here, this is aluminum. Look down here. You see this down there? You can see a little bit of that. Can I write my name? That's the frost, right? So now you guys know that it's cold. And you know the fact that I can see the ice cubes in here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it, right? And then we're going to go ahead and put it over here like this. All right, I want to get it all up in the back. Let me turn it around. You know that little cavity right there? I know some of y'all laughing right there, but you see that right there? You, you see that? Mm -hmm. Hey, we got to get we got to get it. Hey, Pat, I can hear you laughing already. You know what I mean? Hey, we got to get it. We got to dunk it. You know what I mean? We got to get this and get this down on the bottom. CJ, what's up, hey, what's good, CJ? What you know about this right here, man? Hey, you looking for brownie points, bro? Now, when you brine, you want to be completely submerged like you see right here. You know what I mean? I don't want to add nothing else to it. This right here is fine. Now, this is the part that's going to get everybody. I said it and I mentioned it before. Look, I don't have my, my top to this one right here because of, hey, good job, team. You know, <laughs> you know my, my team took the, the top. Okay, so look, if you take it like this, I just happen to have a lid. It's a little bit bigger, but it's over here like this. This serves a purpose because it some of you guys can put it in the refrigerator. That'll work. If you got room to put a big pot, if you're doing chicken, you can put it in your refrigerator. I can just say this. Most of most of you guys, if you're doing a turkey, where are you going to put that big ass, I mean, that big bucket? Hey, y'all almost got me. Pat, I've been hanging around. Hey, Pat, you a bad influence on me, mate. <laughs> so, look, the lid serves one purpose. It serves the purpose is because I like to put it somewhere cool. If you guys are in here and it's cold in your house, you know, cold weather, you guys got the heater on, so you're maintaining the temperature, right? I don't want this to get, hey, we want to keep this as cool as possible. So for me, I buy a bucket, I got a lid on it, and that bucket goes in my garage where it stay cold. You see what I'm saying? That's what I do. So this lid right here, what it's going to do is it's going to keep all of the particular, the, uh, the particles out of the air that's getting inside of this right here. But this right here will be ready tomorrow. I was going to do eight hours, but you know what? No, nah, we're going to go ahead and let it brine all the way through. So if you guys uh, like this, or going to try that, let me know in the comment section. You know what I mean? Uh, really want to know that. And then uh, I'll, I guess I'll just see you guys after you do it. Now, if it was me and I was on the other end of that and I'm watching AB and I'm saying, you know what, AB, I'm going to make that. And I know some of y'all saying I'm going to do mine like that on Thanksgiving. But this is how I get down. I want to try it now. You know what I'm saying? Why not do this this weekend? We finna brine something. I'm going to brine something uh, Friday night when I get up uh, when I get up on Saturday. Saturday morning, I'm going to turn my sports on. I'm going to go in that kitchen, and then I'm going to go ahead and, you know, make one of these after I get it all prepped. And then I'm going to go ahead and make one, and I'm going to cut it. And then when I cut it, I'm going to run back to YouTube, and I'm going to holler at AB and tell him, hey, bro, hey, everything you said was spot on. All right. We have one more question. Okay, I'm going to take one. I'll take this question right here. They said, can you substitute honey with aspartame to lower sugar levels? Aspartame. You know, you guys ask me some 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 great questions, 
And again, man, I feel like that should be like a show. You know what I mean? Like, you know, to take these kind of questions, you know what I mean? And just experiment just to find out. I really don't know the answer to that. I don't know by taking out whatever they take out to, and even those chemicals that they use to make it taste like sugar and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to say, yeah, that'll work or no, it won't work. Not without knowing. You know what I mean? So on that one, I'm going to go ahead and just keep it ghetto and plead the fifth. <laughs> So someone said, I'm dying to see you live more often since you never want to over talk in on your other videos. You definitely hey, you know what? Uh, I appreciate it. You know, and uh, I got to say this. Listen, I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't going to act like y'all got to tell me to do it. I like doing it. You know what I mean? Uh, and I promise you, you know, from 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 myself to y'all, I'm going to start doing it. I'm going to make this part of my rigmarole. You know what I mean? So look for this about every two weeks. We can get down here and get in this kitchen. You know what I mean? If everybody participating and, you know, smashing the like button and, uh, and, and, you know, answer these questions, you know what I mean? And I like it. I like the fact that you ask questions and make my brain think, you know what I mean? Uh, and if I don't know, I promise you, AB ain't never going to tell you nothing to do. I ain't going to fake like I know, and it's going to work. So I'll tell you if I don't know. Hey, with that being said, you got any more? I'll tell you. How about some hot sauce in the Nah, but check it out. That hot sauce work when you're done with it though. You know what I'm saying? Hey, when you're done with it, you can get on down. All right, you guys, you know what? I'm not going to over talk it. Like, just try to make this as long as I can. This is it right here. This is uh, a brine. Please trust me. Make this come back and let me know. I'll be all over these comments. And the next time uh, we go live, I think we're going to be cooking. I might even do some bacon, something that uh, lasts a little while. You know, like I said, I'm getting ready to drop peach cobbler, a bourbon peach cobbler. Uh, oh, I got to do lima beans. Hey, I got one for you. I want you guys to hit me down in the comment section below. I got a question for you. What's the difference between lima beans and butter beans? And with that being said, guess what, folks? I'm out. Peace.